But the whole Dublin thing and the circus surrounding Stephen Cluxon, I have to say, I, I'm a little bit sickened with this at this point. I think I think this is reverse attention seeking from Stephen Cluxon. <laughs> just just come out and say it. I, I actually think this is one of these lads who stays so quiet because he knows it's drawing attention. And he at this point, I can only surmise that he's enjoying this and he wants people talking about him and him to be like, like the image when there's a video talk about Gaelic football, the Cluxton Willie won't he on the back of the newspapers waiting to see what Desi Farrell will say about it. And like just to kind of touch on what Desi did say, a couple of his quotes were, Stephen has asked for him some time away, deserves that, we'll give him all the time. But I think at this point it's nonsense and it's unfair to the other goalies who might be stepping up. Uh, Jason, I'll start with you. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I can completely see your point. Um, Stephen, we know you're watching. Um, give it up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh well like you know he's he's seen off so many Dublin goalkeepers over the last 20 years but like obviously Evan Comerford has been groomed as the great replacement and he looks well able for it now like he, he he certainly looks like a player that's been learning from the master over the last couple of years closely and he looks primed to to step in to fill that void but like why let this drag on like it's not only unfair to the to Comerford and Michael Shield that are there it's unfair to the rest of the panel because it's it's causing this little sideshow, and the more it drags on, the worse it's going to get. And like, it's mad to think like you know, Desi seemed to be fairly honest yesterday. In fairness to him, when he said he genuinely didn't know, you know that Stephen stepped away, but he hasn't retired. Open ended panel, yada yada yada. But what I do know is Cluxton's a big club man, and I'm sure he did enjoy going back with Parnells this year and playing out the field with them, and not having that sort of pressure that comes with being Dublin captain and being under the spotlight that he. He so undesires that, that comes with playing with Dublin. But um yeah, like just nip it in the bud. Like we're into July, they're heading into a Leicester semi final, Leicester Championship foregone conclusion or not. Um, you know, it's it's not the time of year to be kind of dilly dallying over this or not. Like, you know, um, you know, call it this year, maybe come back next year, or whatever, but you know, surely give clarity on it now, um, given that we're so far in and that they've played five games now between league and championship. Declan, would would Jim Gavin put up with this nonsense? Yeah, well, sure. Look at he put up with Dermot Connolly and he brought Dermot Connolly back. Um, <laughs> you know, he, he watched Dermot Connolly try to kick a sideline over the bar in an All Ireland final, didn't he? Like, you know, when Kieran Kilkenny wanted it and, and they would have been easily recycling another what minute of possession to, to win the game the first day out. Was that the 2016 final? Um, the memory's not what it once was, but you know what I'm talking about that incident where he he indulged that, and you know there was no punishment for that. And then, even though Dermot then played a summer in Boston, he was able to come back into the panel. And you know, uh, the best managers will make the odd exception uh, for the best talent. Uh, you can talk about team, 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 and the group and the importance of all that, like and and being fair being straight down the middle with everyone. But at the end of the day, when you have generational talents, like you see managers making exceptions for them all the time. And like goalkeeping is slightly different, right? I mean, this is not like Keanu Sullivan saying, I'm done, my body's done. Goalkeepers are, and uh, in, in, they are individuals within teams. This is my view on it. And now, Shane, help me out here. When Davy Fitz was coming into the, the uh, like, d there's Davy, right? Davy is one that would preach about team, 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 team. But there was no team in Davy at all when he was the clear goalkeeper because he was the clear goalkeeper and that's all he wanted to be. Um, now, who was the previous clear, clear goalkeeper? Was it she was it Seamus Durak? Is that a, the right name? Oh, I'm not sure about before Davy, but I know he was there in the late 80s, so maybe he went on. Uh, I'm not sure who was there just before Davy. It was a... a, a a yarn either in Chris O'Connor's book, you know, about uh, uh, the last man, last man standing, you know, about the hurling goalkeepers. That yeah, yeah. Davy found out your man's route to work every morning. And yes. At, a, at an on, how is this still in my head? Um, uh, at an on, uh, you know, he would find out where he went to work in, in the morning, and 
along the way, then your man will be driving his work van, having <laughs> his day's work, and would just spot Davy by the side of the road, pucking the ball off the cable wall, like at whatever, half seven, quarter past seven in the morning. Like, that's insanity. That is not wise, and that is an individual operating within a team game. And Stephen Cluxton is exactly like that. I mean, you know, you can say, oh, we don't know him, and, and we've no insight into him. Of course we don't. But we know enough to know that the way he is driven, uh, and the way that, you know, that even in um, the clues that you do get from John Leonard's book, uh, who is the Dublin sub goalkeeper, dub sub confidential, wasn't it? That, yeah. like, he took his he took lessons from Cluxton and said, right, just, he seems to be an early. I'm going to come in 10 minutes earlier. But he could never get the better of Cluxton because Cluxton then was simply going straight from school to training and eating then, like, you know, in the dressing room before or whatever. You know, so these people are the most selfish driven players within a team environment because there's only one position to go to and that is Stephen Cluxton may not want to give up the kudos and the privilege and all that that comes with being the Dublin goalkeeper and captain and that's why it, it hasn't come as a surprise people call people say to my husband Shea Comer or call him selfish I mean, Jesus Christ lads you know like, if he wasn't selfish he wouldn't be a 39 year old uh, playing inter-county anymore like he has to be inter-county players are extremely selfish people like you know that's just the way it works <laughs> uh, just uh, another point on this do you think how much of a blow do you think this would be to Dublin if he doesn't play this year like do, have you seen enough from Everton Comerford that, that he but, can step uh, up Bits and pieces, like you know, whenever he gets the chance, and I, I don't. I, I uh, have been talking to different people who would say that it'll be seamless. I don't know. Yeah, don't, because it's only the biggest moments we'll find out. Like Evan Comfort's playing yeah, against yeah, I mean, Evan Legion Comfort's not played in all anything. He's not yeah. played. Did he play in the semi final against Tipperary when he yeah. when 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 Cluxton was injured a couple of years ago? Like he obviously has played in one, I think, semi final or quarter final. Anyway, but he, I tell you what. He hasn't played with the Kerry lads and well, probably not going to get a full house in all in final anyway, but he hasn't played in those big days with a big press on him and pressure on him. And then, you know, the rest of the country will be hoping that there'll be cracks then and, and, and we just we different things creep in this game. We don't know. And just a final point then. Um, so Dublin won by 15 points to seven against Wexford. I got fairly slated online because I said recently that it was going to be an annihilation. But fair play to Wexford. They've ran it down my throats and plenty of other people's as well. What, what do you take from this? I know, I know you weren't there, Jason, so you're probably just relying on highlights at the moment, haven't had time to watch the thing back. But Cormac Costello, he scored a couple from play, five frees. Fenton and Howard got two each. Dean Rock, Kieran Kilkenny in his 10th season, believe it or not, at this stage, Tom Laff and Colin Baskell all got a, all got scores each. No score for Conor Callaghan. Obviously, Wexford did an awful lot right here, but at what, what stage do we buy into the narrative that Dublin, maybe they're coming back a small bit, Paddy Andrews isn't there, Michael Darren McCauley, Keno Sullivan, Jack McCaffrey, so on and so forth. Or is it just put them into Croker and uh, that's where they'll do their damage? They were brought away from Croker here Maybe it's a bit like the Carlo game a few years ago. These are the sort of conditions you need to, to trouble them a little bit. Or, or what are your thoughts in general? Yeah, well, I was I was talking to my colleague Gordon Manning this morning. He was at the game, and he thought Dublin looked disinterested for parts of the game. He thought they were very sloppy. He thought Wexford got under their skin. He thought Wexford balanced it very well between getting under Dublin's skin and trying to play a bit of football at the same time. And... Um, he thought Conor Callan in particular got very frustrated when a few of the Wexford players got into his face and that kind of his head was maybe gone early and that this was something that he certainly wasn't used to. Uh, the only bits of the games the game I saw was from the Sunday game, which of course can be hard to judge. But like when you see Brian Fenton just kicking him his ball out over the line and stuff like that, you're thinking, geez, what's going on here? But you have the croaker factor as well, obviously, like, you know, um, I remember putting a tweet up last week, someone pointing out that England are playing all their games in Wembley. I was like, Jesus, thank God this doesn't happen in the GA, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, like, yeah, like, like they could go in to Croker now against me and absolutely batter them within an inch of their lives. Like, they did in the Leinster final, final last year, you know? Um, like, me, they're obviously going to be coming in a high, great performance by all the things from them, but... It just would be... It's You know, it is great when you do get them out of their comfort zone and put them on the road like you know that's the first Leinster away game since 2006 against Longford like you know that's it's just not good enough like you know um, mm. but 
jury's out still time will tell like, they could go into croke park now and obliterate me who knows but the signs were there that the chinks were in the army you know and declan's point too um we'll know all about comerford as well when he's facing the likes of david clifford in a high press and there's there's a noisy there's a noisy croke park maybe two-thirds full at least come the end of august please god so we'll just have to see Join the Our Game Supporters Club at Patreon for €5 Euros per month to get audio podcasts of the Hurling and Football Show and much more exclusive material.